All right. We have, if I'm not mistaken, is it Gary here in the house? Yes. my. Hi, Walt. Yeah, I'm here. I see him. I just was making sure I hadn't lost you too, man. I don't even know um, where my controls welcome, Gary. have gone. Welcome, Gary. We're glad to have Hi, you, my everyone. friend. Oh, hello, Gary. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, Zach. It's nice to be here, and thanks so much for continuing with this every other week um, invite. No, thanks for coming back, man. We're interested it, right? to, um, well, I'm going to fake being interested in knowing who the guest is, that, or the, the new name you've got to announce. Yeah, I'll bet you can't guess, can you, John? I, I you, just can't. Oh, well, I'm I, I the think, wrong screen. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, no? there's, there's three parts okay. to tonight that I want to mention. There's two, two of them are related, and... Um, this, this person that I'm just going to announce is one, is aware of um, some of it, and two, um, he's a very strong advocate for uh, Flat Earth, especially with debates. And I would like to introduce Nathan Oakley. Hello. Yay, soundboard. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Hey, Nathan. How you doing, Nathan? Very well. Good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. Just glad you're here. Glad we can hear you. Glad things are working. I don't know where Adam went, but can I, um, can you hear we've me lost now? our rudder as usual. <laughs> oh no! He's welcome. No doubt. I'm here. I was looking for Adam. Actually, trying to see if he left us a message anywhere on Twitter or Skype. I have yet to can find you, can one. Can you hear so. me? Hello. Uh, yes. There he is. Oh, this oh, might be happening, up. guys. This headset gave out last night. I don't know. It's just dodgy as hell. So. Just ignore me, and I'll That's come back. That's what happens and... when you buy ten headsets off dodgy no. Phil up the road on his on his auction site. No, this one was from the shop. That's the annoying thing. The, the auction stuff I rebuild. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sorry guys, sorry about that. Welcome Gary, welcome Nathan. So Gary, you said oh, yeah. uh, you had three parts to it. One was introducing Nathan. Yeah, uh, yeah. With Nathan, obviously, um, we all know how uh, uh, fantastic he is at debating. So, um, in having a conversation recently, or about a month ago, uh, Dee Dee and myself with Adam, um, it was strongly suggested that um, Nathan should be one of our debaters for the geocentric model or geocentric realm. And um, as soon as it came up, we thought, yeah, what, what an absolute perfect fit because. But John, if you remember two weeks ago, you were saying, oh, I think that you know, Nathan's probably the strongest advocate for the debating for us out there. Mm. And you were saying about maybe like the Oxford University and other bits and pieces. Then I said, oh, just watch this space because things are happening. So right. we were, we were, and I are really, really pleased that Nathan has uh, agreed to um, to join us in Amsterdam. And, um, and we're dead excited about it. So, yes. Um, mm. Yeah, everyone else seemed to get that cryptic link, but no one informed me as to what what it meant. And yeah, so I, I, I am excited to hear what you had to say. No, that's great. Yeah, because we were, I think we were suggesting it a couple of weeks ago, weren't we? Sort of putting our A team up against, you know, if you're going to go to the Oxford Debating Society, then um, let's let's go there prepared for prepared for the worst and and be pleasantly surprised I'd, I'd say yeah it's yeah. it's it's not actually that nathan is actually um been put aside for that he's actually going to be um part of the team for the debate um at the amsterdam convention so on the saturday we're going to have our goal is to have like a half an hour slot for each of the four um debaters two on the geocentric um two on the heliocentric and then there's going to be like a, a, a questions back and forth between them um, in the afternoon session before it then goes on to the audience to ask questions. So, um, so we're really very pleased um, to be working with Nathan on this. And um, we all know how strong he is. Well, also, it's it, it, like I was saying um, a couple of weeks ago, you know, forget the Oxford Debating Society. They, they've become sort of... Well, irrelevant, but the, where the real debates are is going to be the conferences going forward. And I think you're setting up a good team there. And um, Nathan's obviously a hugely strong arm of that 
that side of things. But how, how do you feel about it, Nathan? Think, you looking forward? Yeah, definitely. Very confident. <laughs> Did everyone see uh, allegedly Dave against a physicist uh, recently? Yeah, that was. Uh, it was um, bum nippy, oh, it? some. It was some. Poor lad. Some European. Uh, like, uh, where, 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 where was it? Where was um, he from? Yeah, oh, shocking, um, wasn't it? Um, he um, physicist, wasn't he? And and you, um, if you read in the comments, uh, like the YouTube comments, everyone says, please, if you're a if you're a globe believer, just have a look at the flat Earth model before you go and debate anybody because they have not got a clue. Most have not got a clue what our model is, is, is anything about it. You know, they just go in absolutely blind and they just get made fools of. It's not, see, that the thing, that's, that's the way you set yourself up for failure, I think, in any debate, is to present yourself with your model when you don't know shit. When, when the honest answer is, I don't know shit, but I do know I'm being lied to. And, and I that think is that's... shown so many times over and over again. Sorry, Adam. On no. Nathan show. Yeah. It all these, you know, people who are being educated at the time, smart young individuals who are told things are facts and this and that and yada yada yada. And then I I love it when they tell Nathan that he doesn't understand something. Because that's like lighting a fire under his ass and he just jumps all over him and starts oh. Uh, but yeah, no. What, um, what, what, what would you really think? A, a real globe believer, what would he think of that debate if he if he saw it? Would he think he got beat, or he just laugh it off? Well, the thing is, it's the way Nathan handles the debate. He's not making any statements about anything when he does it. He, he meant, he meant uh, allegedly Dave, right? Yeah, oh, Dave. No, Dave. No, yeah, sorry, yeah. Do, do you think a, a person who believes in the globe would watch that and 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 think that they did okay, or you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't see the debate. Well, or you'd well. come out if you believed in the globe and you listened to what that man said. All you'd come out believing is, um, uh, yeah, uh, just, um, just from this perspective, though. But um, uh, yeah, that was basically his. He was completely dumbfounded for me from point one. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't think he had anything really that was worthy of addressing. And to me, it was another one of those examples where they don't come to the table prepared, which, as Zach saying, you, you see constantly on, on Nathan's show. It's a, an arrogance, a, 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 a presupposition. <laughs> that they have of their so knowledge base. Do we do we know who um, Nathan is up going to be up against in um, in Amsterdam? We've got weeks At to wait. Moment, no, no, that's still we're still working on that. It was another cryptic clue though, Gary, weren't they? Like the other week, that John, just leave it there for John. Go and find. <laughs> <laughs> but there was another one last week. Um, so I, I, I think it's, 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 it's in kind of really important this year that it doesn't matter who comes to the, the, to the debate, but that it's necessary that they don't have to be schooled in their own model, whoever comes to the, the debate. And, you know, respectfully to the young boys last year, they didn't understand about when I challenged them out about gas pressure they didn't understand and use the water pressure as an analogy to validate their point. They didn't understand about gyroscopes and had to pass on that, you know. And I think that's the thing for me that the whoever's on the ball side, really, that is not an acceptable defence. If it's, I, I don't know. In relation to their model, should not really be acceptable defense and that's that's the bit where i think is your challenge gary in terms of getting those that are prepared to because once you <laughs> once you take it it's hard to then you know once you've once you've got a grasp of the model and i think that's what we're coming to tonight it, it's very hard to defend when you fully explain it there has to be levels of admission um 
and certainly for me at higher academia, levels of admission is something that you do see. Ask you guys a question. So if I say in in regards to heliocentricity, the model, would you know what I was talking about? I would. I would think I would know what you're talking about, but we would have to this week. Yeah. So John, tell me. What what would it be talking about? Like the spinning ball hurtling around the sun. Um Nine planets, cosmos, accident, big bang, uh, redshift, uh, water sticking to the ball, that sort of thing. It's quite a lot. Of, quite a lot of things. So, given that you've just listed off quite a quite a number of things, if I and this is the poignant part, if I asked you to show me that model, what do you think you'd come up with? If I was to show you the model, well, it would have to be, uh, you mean physical model? Um, Here we go. I mean, if it's a physical model, then then you'd need a little earth, and then a long, long away, you would be a little... Yeah, I'll try and put it another, another way, right? So all of you at some point will have debated with the globe head, and they'll have gone, well, in our model, and the way it's put across is that they have this all-encompassing, solves everything, does everything, explains everything, model, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you actually get to that stage and you are debating with said globe head, ask them that question that I've just asked you. Can I see this model, please? <laughs> Will you, you live in it? Show you? <laughs> Is that what you get back? Will you're living in it? Well... What I'm saying is the amount of times flat earthers have been challenged to quote unquote, show us your model right now. I'll just preface this by saying models are pseudoscience. They don't prove anything. They're not establishing cause effect. They're not science. They're just models, right? They might be useful for explaining something, but they're not proving anything. Ultimately speaking, they are pseudoscience. If you're using them to prove something in that manner, which the globe heads do. So they have a pseudoscience model, but, if you actually challenge them to present it, they don't have it. They might have some small aspect of it that they can either verbally, mathematically, or otherwise describe. But if you actually say, well, let's have a look at it, what are they actually going to present you? Well, they rely on these crutches and, and off the off the cuff sort of, you know, it's impossible to work in your model, but works in our model perfectly and all this sort of thing. How um, do you but explain eclipses? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's another one. Um, if we said 96% of our model was invisible and couldn't be detected at all, <laughs> it, you know, we could have it do anything we wanted to. I mean, yeah, they, they don't have a model. But right, it's, exactly. it, they don't have a model. So when they go on about, you phrased it, our model, and you hear that phrase, well, in our model, just immediately, if you like, say, can I see it, please? See what? <laughs> Our model. Let's have a look. Let's see what it looks it like. It reminds me of the um, the one that they always come back with, the, the royal we, you know, where we've been to the moon. We've got pictures of space. We have an ISS up in orbit and all this. And and you just have to say, well, what do you mean we? Well, <laughs> you're talking complete hearsay of people you don't even know that you're just simply believing I mean, that's the definition of a religion. So it's... Um, yeah, I was about to say, the priests, when they say we, they actually mean the priests. Mm. Talks to God. My priest talks to God. Okay, but yeah, the royal we in uh, globalism. I was say, with, it's not that... Because the, the defence that will come back from, from you boys, we, we do have a model. They, they do have models, but they have models of specific... <laughs> components of reality what they don't have is a an actual working model of reality that they prof profess so they might have a bit that that works and gives prediction but the sad thing is these things don't then harmonize and work together um 
Well, they have and, a broken that's, clock, don't they? Yeah, and and that's the distinction because you'll get the the silly argument. Yeah, we do. This model works. It does. That may give you, and and that's the other thing about models. They don't prove anything. A model either demonstrates something or gives a prediction. Um, at best, they don't prove anything. They're they're models. <laughs> And most of the time, their model is wrong. It doesn't work. Um, and we'll hopefully go on to show that this evening. But, you know, how can the moon spin around the Earth and is it accelerating and decelerating? And um, th there's so many aspects of their so-called model that don't work. You know, tides being associated with the moon. And that can be shown to be nonsense as well in in so many respects. And there's it, just so much that doesn't work in the model, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And part of the problem is that whole egotistical you've built or they've built or whoever you're debating has built their ego, their personality on being smart, being nerdy, being aware of all this science news and they follow all these people on Twitter and they know it all. But what they don't know is the basis of it all is just theoretical, you know, just like the, the dark matter that they still are trying to make excuses. Real quick shout out to Randy Flat Earth. Uh, he left a little super message here for us. Ballers now understand linear compression is real. They now understand ambient light behaves differently to a laser beam, breaking the globe day by day. RFE, get them, KB Fish Tank Warrior Princess. <laughs> Shout out, Randy. I oh, love it. And uh, Dave Murphy was in the chat just a minute ago. Oh, as well. I'm trying to play catch up. Hello, Dave. Glad to have you. He's the man that got me into all this. I think David Weiss um, posted a video from. Dave and led me to this. Thanks, Dave. Absolutely glad to have you in chat with us. I got to meet him at the uh, conference in 2018. It was really nice. It, he was really ill. He'd like, I don't know if he'd inhaled some sort of acid at the time, but he sounded really rough and it was uh, under the weather. But it was nice to still, you know. Give him a hug and say, hello, Dave. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, great. It's really nice the just to segue slightly into the conferences, but it is really nice to press the flesh, actually meet people, realize they're not, you know, the 2015 laden paranoia of shells that everyone labels us, you know, just people doing our it's thing. What, um, it's what upsets me the most about all this is I'm here alone. Well, I feel like I'm alone down here on the bottom of the ball. You've and got to get like you, you guys. You guys have conferences within a hundred kilometers of yours. Yes, kilometers, America metric system. No, kilometers. No. All right. Australia's too get on big. board. Yeah, and, and I'm thousands. I'm thousands of kilometers wet. away from from a from a conference that's been the closest to me. So it make sucks. the flat Earth conference in Australia. Make it happen, Rob. You can do it. I think there has been one. Well, but it was down in Melbourne or Sydney, which is. No, it all fell apart. Away. Oh, did it? Didn't it even was get a going. Big media shambles <clears throat> and probably a complete setup. Was it? Was Jaron going to go to that? Um, I don't think Jaron knew he was, but apparently. Oh right, <laughs> one of those ones. One of those ones. Yeah, it was so a I very could, dodgy affair. So I could have rolled up. So I could have rolled up and said I was Jaron. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. Do you want to remember what uh, Grandpa Simpson said about the metric system? Oh, you start me off. I reckon I would be able to quote it. Yeah, go. That the metric system is the devil. He's not wrong, is he? It is an introduction. Uh, it's part of, I'm going to go mud floody. But again, you see a redefining of units to take away any meaning the old uh, imperial, whatever, but the old units that actually were based on, well, reality-wise, things that we don't really understand why they based them on that, but they certainly had a meaning. Um, and and the, the metric system is, it's also, I think, a way of moving away of thinking mathematically because decimalization 
and using base 10 as a functioning system is it's very simplifying of, of how you can manipulate numbers and stuff so if you use hexadecimal or octa or on a decimal systems it, it's a you really have to understand the numbers do, do you know what i mean and i think what you see as much as they profess progression um i think you see a, a regression in size and a simplifying and a dumbing down and hiding of of levels of complexity um and the the power of these different systems that computers work in zeros and ones you know what i mean so it's I've, I've kind of lost the point I was making there, but do you see that they've um, they keep redefining all these standard measurements, like they did the kilo about a month ago, and they keep they, they'll redefine it now in terms of pseudoscience. So it's um, you know they'll bring it back to the Big Bang or um, some sort of cosmological so that no one can verify it. So it's completely un, unrepeatable for the common man to say, here is how I can um, independently create what they now define as a kilo. I think it was a kilo. It was one yeah, of the last um, ones. Sorry. Right. It was the kilo. And they've now made it out of a different material, which name I can't remember. But they had, I think if memory serves me, six going back for quite some time and they were separated out and put in different locations. But then when they brought them back together and compared them, they were different. So they <laughs> didn't have a standardized kilo. Um, but now it's been re-standardized. This is literally in the last few months. Yeah. Yeah. But they totally changed the definition of it. So it's now in into it's, it's, it's derived by pseudoscience. By you or I, could um, quantify it or reproduce it in any way, shape, or form. So, and they've done the same with with the meter and things like this as well. I think they were sort of saying in this article that you know the kilogram is one of the last remaining to be defined in a modern day uh, scenario. But um, yeah, if I, I could go and look up some standard units and. of this so when he did a presentation recently he was he was aware of this about to happen so he actually it was the first i'd heard of it because he defined it and said no this terminology will change slightly and and sort of preempted that change in terminology when he did the presentation because he was talking about uh, i can't remember which concept he was specifically talking about but it came up in in whatever presentation he was doing i should really should really have a better handle of presentations i've done with john but i've done quite a few um but nevertheless he, he had it all terminal uh, terminology all laid out correctly for the change in other words so the video would still be relevant and have all the correct meanings in it um i can't remember the exact definition i hope you'll look, look it up so we'll I'll tag on and pretend I knew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll look it up now. Before we um, go too far off kilter, guys, can we, Gary, are you are you still there? And can you uh, maybe just summarise? Yeah, because if we don't, mate, we'll wander off. Because I've got <laughs> so. Well, can I lead? Can I lead, Gary? So, Gary, yeah, do it. Give us the dates, the times, the where's, the when's. Give us all that for the for the conferences. Um, the UK convention conference is the 13th and up to the 15th of September. The Amsterdam convention is the 27th, 28th, 29th of the same month. And the, the tour to end all tours tour starts, I think it's the 29th of August and it goes on to around about mid November, but I may be corrected by Roxanne and, um, and Robin, but that's there or thereabouts the, uh, almost like an eight week, window for people to get involved in some way that's a european tour right so that's the globe light tour europe yeah 64 destinations i think it's 39 countries which in, takes in both the uk stroke convention and the netherlands and convention so yeah 39 countries in total which is extreme well it's good stuff going on in 2019 and uh, you've pioneered this um expansion of the topic in the way it's presented to the public through 2018 
and I'm hoping the 2019 will be you know even better. But it's uh, a lot of the well, suspensions come from you, John. Uh, so sorry, yeah. Gary. <laughs> right, Nathan. Uh, the thing is, though, if you think about it, last year, we had um, obviously um, what happened in rally, and then obviously then it moves on to uh, Canada. Then there was the UK. This year, it's gone up to I think there's like nine events, and um, it's just I, I don't know what you think about this, Nathan. But there seems to be a lot of lot of chat about um, 2020 is a really big year. Like, I think you know, like 2020 is a big year for quite a few reasons. One of them, of which is the 5G issue, which is uh, a big, big stumbling block. I think a big issue. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you think about what's happening in 2019, it's it's off the scale compared to what's happened in 17. Uh, uh, Gary, like, do you want to do you want to speak on that for a bit? If you want, that? I know you you're a bit of a one of your beefs, isn't it? What we're we talking about, five G, five G, yeah, mate. If you want to have a bang, because it's pretty current. If you want to have a bang, just you know what I mean. Cause... Yeah, I, I, I'm not an absolute expert on this, uh, but I have done a little bit of research that at this moment the the, the phone systems are based on I think two point four gigahertz. And um, I believe that's a frequency that works um, where it affects us um, with, I, I believe it's liquid as in water, but with the um, 5G, it's going to be ramped up to, I think, I think it's 60 gigahertz, which is actually more um, in, in air. And what they have to do is because they have to have the, uh, the little routers, you know, the little hubs closer, they're going to have to up the power. And in doing that, if you're inside, if you're like in a, in a particular like, I don't know, I live in a village and you have five or six of these around you, you're actually basically, I, I'm calling it a, like a kill grid that you're actually in this almost like this radiation zone. So the question is how many people here in the chat would want to be in a room surrounded by a load of microwaves and the answer they wouldn't, but that's exactly what we're going to have. So I personally feel that people should uh, like when they go out, they got to, they really should be considering turning off their Wi-Fi because if the, if the Wi-Fi is on your phone, it has to work hard to look for a Wi-Fi signal, even though you may be connected to data. But that means not only you're using up your battery, but you're also making the phone work harder, and if it is kicking out radiation, which I believe, or we all believe it does, then you're just creating yourself more harm. And I just can't believe that there's, there's people that, like for instance, go to a show or convention or go to the shops or whatever, and they have their phones in their pocket that's within half an inch of their skin. And it's just, I don't know, I just think uh, people don't realize the significance of it really. So there's loads more on 5G. Obviously, you know, it's just, and the other thing is like, it's not only, uh, it's, it's a big brother thing as well as uh, the uh, radiation. And and it's just, it just, I just think that everyone really should be aware that 5G is not the way for the future, really. I understand that the, some of the benefits of what they're doing, like driverless cars and other things, but there's so much more bad about it than there is good. I don't think driverless cars add much benefit to be, Perfectly honest, they're all going around exploding and mowing people down and everything, aren't they? Well, I think what the, well, the thing what's is the point John? in a car if you can't drive it. Exactly. <laughs> so, sorry to just. I just want to check what, what exactly is the score with five G then. So it's just a much higher frequency, therefore requires much more power. What what it is, uh, Nathan, is that they can't where you have like a particular a particular like I mean. Again, I'm not an expert on this, but this is the gist of it. But where you would have, like, for instance, um, a base station, for the want of a better word, every 500 meters um, or every, like, 2,000 meters or whatever it is, they, they can't – it can't work. It apparently can't go through walls or it's got very little strength. So the yeah, only way yeah. – Yeah, they so have to frequency. So they have to push up the, the power to make them operate. And yeah. Because of that, yeah, high frequency. Yeah, so it's not only a frequency issue, but you've also had to ramp up the pressure, the, the, the power to get it to work. And if you're within an, an area um, where you've got two or three of these around you, which is easy because of the fact that they're, they're going to be like literally almost every other lamppost. And it's, it's just something that I think a lot of people need to look into how bad it is. I mean, I've, I've done research about this about eight months ago and I've lost, lost you know, some of my like thoughts on it have probably gone out the window because I've moved on to other things. But it is it is a pet subject of mine that um, you know I've I've like, I've got a landlord and I said to him, well, when they start pushing the five G on you, can you please consider not having it because it's just not good. Okay, I mean I I understand the reasons behind it. I don't know the the dangers of it. Obviously, you're more 
familiar, but in terms of the, the whys and wherefores of why you'd have to have more transmitters, it's basically, if you imagine if you're at a concert, as you get further and further away from the concert, you lose the higher frequencies until eventually all you'll hear is the drone of the bass, i.e. the lower frequencies. So lower frequencies can travel much, much further and through walls. And as you go higher and higher in frequency, the less distance they require or the more power you have to put into them to make them go through things like walls. So the way you negate that is to have considerably more transmitters at this higher frequency and it'll drop one, go to the next, drop one to, you know, continually like you described and earlier. And that's exactly what it is. That was well explained. So it's like if at a concert you'd have like the bass speakers at the front and you'd have hundreds of tweeter speakers all around carrying the, the higher frequencies. Yeah, so the higher frequencies wouldn't... If, if you hear your next-door neighbour playing music, normally all you will hear is the lower frequencies mm. because they can travel through walls. They're, they're more powerful, mm. whereas the higher frequencies won't. They'll just get absorbed by the walls. And it's the same with transmitting um, frequencies as well. So the lower frequencies um, uh, can go through buildings physically. They'll traverse... The frequency will traverse a building without necessarily having to have huge amounts of power put behind it, um, whereas the higher frequencies just won't. They'll hit a wall and die. Um, so the higher the frequency, the worse that problem becomes, and therefore the more transmitters you have to have closer together in order to maintain a, a steady high frequency. And, and isn't it isn't it um, that five G is millimeter wave? Um, yes, that's right. Which is the same crap they've got at the airports. Which even now, I think if you look up even on Wikipedia, it says it's untested on humans. They don't know what the uh, long-term effects of millimeter wave technology is on humans. Um, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, they're actually they're actually there's certain towns I believe that they're actually um, they're rallying against it because they they realise that the actual science on it is is flawed. They haven't done the research, and and there's two there's two other issues with it. I've kind of touched on it, but one is that you literally could be in a smart house and they would know not only how much you're using of a particular product, they would actually know that you've gone into your fridge, for instance, you've got a smart fridge. They would know that you, there's like, almost like three people in the house and what you've used. And they also can control, they can literally send a frequency and they can control people with it. Uh, I, I, I'm not an expert on that. Or, well, I'm not an expert on any of it, but what I'm trying to say is I haven't done that's, really much that's, research on it. That's nearer the mark I was about to make what you've got here is admission of toxic effects and stuff um but for a, a much better purpose we can get more data um and that that's the way it's being sold but i think that's <clears throat> the way i would look at it is that that's never the reason doing it but what they are building is a as you said you're in a small village but they're building into the psyche of people to have these stations in your garden here there and everywhere and i don't think it's necessarily a plan for this generation i think it's a plan for our kids so that totally normalized to have these stations that as you allude to whatever nefarious reasons and i think to try and guess them is daft but um that would to me would be the real purpose of all this investment and everything now is to normalize their presence they're really pushing it on our YouTube commercials that I've been watching over the last few days. Every other commercial is some kind of device that's either sitting in your kitchen with a screen and you're cooking with dad, or it's a little tiny device on the counter next to where the little pet pig, and now the pet pig in the shed because the pet pig is too big. And so now it's all this lovey, touchy, feely, oh, everybody needs to have this close togetherness on fucking screens. Oh, it makes me insane. Sorry. <laughs> can you see on the screen there was um, a case in Gateshead recently with a guy called Mark Steele um, who puts out videos on YouTube and the the judge refused to gag the anti five street light campaigner and said the public has a right to know so we're moving on quite well on this front but if we want to go back to the kilo kilo sorry thank kilo. you um, currently, the uh, kilogram has a very simple definition. It's the mass of a hunk of 
platoon platoon. Who wants to read this? <laughs> As I, I don't want to read it. Well, I was going to say I I lost my headsets when you were saying about that, but the kilo okay, well, is it's a, it's the kilo a to me was the way I was taught it is one kilo of mass is equivalent to one liter of water in French or Satan. Or yeah, electric. but it's got a, a standard. I've got it in front of me. It's yeah, just but what like, I mean is that was one one liter of of distilled water was one kilogram. That that was the defining uh, unit was water, distilled water. So that was the way it was defined, and weight its weight one kilogram was devi- defined volumetrically from that your substance. Um, right, well, you like now volunteered do... yourself to read what I've got on the screen. I was going to say, it looks like they're about to do the same, aren't they, look? So, currently, the kilogram has a very simple definition. It's the mass of a hunk of platinum iridium alloy that has been housed in the... So, so instead of <clears throat> instead of it being something that we could all go and distill water, take a known volume of and define ourselves, it's now defined as... Go back up. No, no, no. That's what it used to be defined as. This is what right. it is now defined this as. Is now no, well, no, we'll go to that point. So the, the other point first, because then it was, so first, secondly, it was then defined as something that you couldn't touch yourself, right? But was right. did physically exist, but couldn't touch yourself, somewhere. but was locked away somewhere from you, yeah? Because it's so precious, right? So now you're saying it's defined as what? That yellow. I gotta read that, John. Yeah, I? you gotta read that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta read that. It says the kilogram symbol kg is the SI units of mass is defined by taking a fixed numerical value of the Planck constant to be six point six two six zero seven zero. What's that? Fifteen times ten to the minus thirty four. When expressed in the unit of J S, which is equal to a kilogram. What's that? Meters squared times... Well, I've got a Jaffa cake in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Probably wasn't the best person to read this. No, thank you very much for no, reading it. I was going to say, I'll tell you Step what. You in could, there like a true man. He could, he could be quite useful here, Oakley, you could. I'll tell you, mate, that was... That, even with a Jaffa cake, that was better than us. So. <laughs> and, it, and it finishes off where the meter and the second are defined in terms of C and... Some weird triangle B capital C S. I mean, it's just yeah. So well, at least, at least your article attempted to explain well, it. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Oh, yeah. go back. That was the bit that that John qualified the bit about the Planck constant. So yeah. that was right. what he he put in prior to. Um, they exp- there's a good Veritasium video on this actually, and it explains it had it on the earlier bit of the article about Lagrange K and how they split it up, vaguely what I said earlier, which is that they had lots of them that split them up, and then they kept brought them back together, tested them, and they were wrong, so they now redefined it. But I think in the Veritasium video, they had this sphere out of this crazy um, man-made polymer or something that looked like metal. It was really shiny, and it was exactly a kilogram and cost a million dollars to produce or some crazy nonsense. But there we go. So, yeah, if you want a really detailed explanation on this, from memory, the Veritasium video does a really good job of explaining it. But as Adam was saying, I mean, isn't it so much more simple to to have a litre of water equals a kilogram? I yeah. Mean, how, how, oh, that, rather than the, the nonsense they came out with down here. But, uh, I mean, yeah. yeah Is that yeah. something that can, can actually remain constant? You, like you say, you take, a, you take um, the water, but you, you, you remove all impurities. You, you take distilled water. Mm. Yeah. But water on the North Pole would weigh more, I mean, less, <laughs> I mean, more Pretty than the equator. Um, and I'm taller, on, I'm taller on the equator. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Sounds like you've been talking to Wolfie while you've been away. Yeah, that's the... That's a phonological fallacy. So he punted that as scientific evidence, and I had to rip him a new one in his own comment section and point out that it's uh, not science. It's actually a phonological fallacy. It's called affirming the consequent. Expand on that a bit, uh, if you would. I'll try and formulate it. I can't remember exactly how he formulated it, but some words 
words similar to if I travel to the outside edge of a presupposed sphere, I will weigh X. Um, and I do weigh X at the outside edge and Y at the inside edge of a presupposed sphere. Therefore, the Earth is a presupposed sphere. So <laughs> then Q, Q, therefore P. So the, the easy example of a form of logical fallacy. Or is, a is, that, is that Wolfie you're talking about, Nathan? Yeah, so Wolfie's basically affirmed the consequent. He's, he's assumed his outcome. So this is all globe proof ever. They assumed that you were on a sphere to begin with. So the, the, the statement, when you formalize it, it, actually starts with, if I am on a sphere. Don't he's, he's, he's doing a job, but he's doing a job because I got my best mate and I tried to, you know, it's been three years. Obviously, I've been in the, into the flat earth for three and a half years and I finally told him what I believed. Anyway, he's looked into it and he's got to a couple of Wolfie videos. He absolutely loves him. He keeps quoting him. He keeps talking about Wolfie and, and his video of this lighthouse that proves the curve and, and it doesn't matter what I say now. Wolfie is the number one because I think Wolfie's Australian, isn't he? Yeah, Wolfie well, is he's the he's the number one man in this in in my mate's eyes, and we had to uh, we had to stop talking about it because yeah, I, I'm always Wolfie's wrong. And, yeah. that, Rob, it's it's not even if X then Y is it, mate? If X, then not X. No, it's if X then Y, Y therefore no, X. No, what like, I mean what I mean is in terms of Wolfie's not. If X, fine, you can weigh it here. When he says Y, what he means by Y is anything. It could be anything, but not X. He's not actually well, quantifying what, what Y will be based on its its geographical change and change of spin and therefore the effect. Uh, of gravity. So He's, basically, the way that logical fallacy breaks down is the one doesn't necessarily follow the other. So if I give it you in a simplistic version, it'll make a lot more sense. If I eat 10 hamburgers, that's P. Then I'm full, Q. Now that's just a statement of fact. If P, then Q. If I eat 10 hamburgers, I'm full, right? Everyone will agree with that. But if I then reverse it and say, if I am full, I must have eaten 10 hamburgers. That's how you formulate the, the, the logical fallacy. So he will start with his premise. If the earth is a sphere, I will observe, insert bullshit here, I observe bullshit I've just stated, therefore the Earth is a sphere. So he just okay, mixes so, in something so, that he does on a presupposed sphere. So number one, he's saying, when I travel, I am traveling this uh, method over a sphere. So he's automatically got whoever is listening to this example to be on a sphere at the beginning of the example and understand that you are traversing a sphere in the example. So he's already begged the question, you're already on a sphere, right? He's detailing how you're moving over the said sphere. So you're begging the question, then he just formulates whatever his example does to proving a sphere, which he's already assumed. Does that make sense? It does. Well, I, I'm, I'm assuming and allowing him the formal logical fallacy. What I'm kind of saying then, to use that quotation is, you use the hamburger one. Whereas you say 10 hamburgers, I'm, he's saying just loads. He's not saying any hamburgers. He's just saying, if I go from here to here, there is a change in, oh, let me show you loads of maths. But he's not saying the weight will be this because of this. So he's kind of saying, if I, I'm full because I've eaten some hamburgers. I let, me, let me try, let me try, let me try. If the world, if the earth is a sphere, I will experience a change in weight as I move from the equator. I experience a change in weight as I move from the equator, therefore the Earth is a sphere. Yeah. They it's that wishy-washy. Exactly. There's no X and Y implies some form of calculation and, and measurement to validate exactly. it. It's not. The, the observation any doesn't old change. necessarily follow the conclusion and right. is based on a presupposition to begin with. Yeah. So in, in their formal logical fallacy in there affirming the consequent the p part is also a begging the question fallacy so instead it makes a lot more sense if i formulate it like if r then q right in other words if i assume the earth is a sphere so you're begging the question then i will observe weight change as i move along my presupposed sphere 
I do observe the weight change as I move along my presupposed sphere. Therefore, the Earth is a sphere. So it's an affirming the consequent. So if if you masturbate, you go blind. Therefore, all blind people are wankers. Exactly. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> all blind people. Oh, uh, uh, you're a wanker, John. <laughs> 2020 vision, mate. That is really funny, John. But sometimes <laughs> they'll put it the other, way, the other way around. So they'll try and get tricky and just and do it the other way around. So they'll say, all people, all blind people are wankers. Therefore, wanking cause, causes blindness. So it's just, it just flips it the other way around. But it ultimately, it's exactly the same formulation. That works, that works too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry to debase it there. Now I understand. <laughs> but that, that's all I ever see now. So like I said, I said, I don't know if I said this in the introduction or I'm hallucinating one or the other. It's pretty late. Um, but all they have is logical fallacies. And when I'm watching the older shows from 12 months ago, I, I see people like Joshua going into the show and it's logical fallacy after logical fallacy after logical fallacy. And then he declares a victory. You're know, like, none of that would crap would, would fly Nathan, now. Nathan, this is, this is the thing that as, as Gary said, I strongly suggest <laughs> in a chat with him and DD. This is the thing that's been making me piss this week. I think it started the week with Wiggles, but it's just some of the after show stuff. It's been, as well as really funny, right? It's been very telling um, about the level of argument they have and what they're prepared to do to distract. And maybe you could start with Wiggles 2019, because that's a classic. And I know the other stuff's been married, but. Wiggles 2019 is. It's what, memeable. Quoting him. Yeah, I just the, it wasn't so much the quoting him, pal. It was the way that during the during his destruction, you coined a phrase that just crushed him at every point because you could do it, and then do the Wiggles 2019, and, and it just brought all the pain. As much as they try to deny what's gone off in the past, and that was the clever thing about Wiggles 2019 for me. What they try to do is ignore the, the previous sentence they've even said. But with that, it was quite ironically used by you. I thought that was quite clever. And that's part of the thing that, for me, the debates has built is this archive of bullshit quotes that you can hold them to. And I think we're at this stage now where, as we've seen this week with a number of people, um, we're able to hold them do something and, and show the contradiction that they have, not only within science, but now with the increased engagement with it, um, the, the contradiction in their own statement. Like I said, it is, it is funny. Oh, definitely. I mean, watching people like Conspiracy Cats squirm for, you know, weeks on end with me tallying up the number of times I've asked him the same question over and over again. I think he got, I can't remember the exact number, but it was definitely in the 300s. It was something like 362 times or something crazy. I asked him the exact same question with quote marks around it, just counting, saying, right, 320th time I've asked you this question, 322nd time, 330th time. <laughs> just kept on asking him. And then eventually, Arwin had him on his show because he, I don't know, maybe saw Arwin as a, an easier choice. And from the chat, I just kept on doing it with the numbers, quoting the same question. And then Arwin read it out verbatim. It was priceless. And all he could do was answer it, honestly. And his answer supports our assertions. Because he's a physics teacher, he knows the score. He knows you can't have gas pressure without a container. And that's what he said. <laughs> so it's like, right, so your explanation, that's going to have a whole load of quote marks put around it. And every single time someone argues with me about it, I'll quote you. And if they argue with that quote i'll take it up with conspiracy cats he's on your side right <laughs> it's his quote nathan there is there is this hey hang on, hang on, one second, Adam. Go on, go on. Yeah. i'm sorry you are apparently are low you're not to us in the call we're hearing you fine but i just checked on youtube and for some reason you definitely are lower on youtube than in the actual zoom call well, me hey. no uh, um nathan i mean i'm sorry adam not nathan everybody's here and everybody else except okay. nathan apparently repeatedly in chat i'm going back through and seeing they uh adam is low adam is low sorry okay is that is that better i don't know check check the chat because you, you've been fine to us through the whole call i haven't had any problem hearing you but when i checked it on youtube a minute ago it definitely is lower i'll try it now 
Hopefully that's a bit better. Let me go check. Now yes. this is the Iron Realm media, I know. That's better, isn't it? It was all going too well. Thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for that. What will we say? Because I was, I was just gonna. <laughs> you see, that's back. We're back. We're back on form. You can that's tell that. we're a bunch of forty-something blokes, can't you? <laughs> can't remember ten seconds ago. <laughs> I wish I was in my forties. Ooh, you are beyond, eh? Yeah, you're in your thirties, eh? I'll get to forty one day. I'm. Um, I will be celebrating my fifty sixth in September. Nice. Fifty six. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm dog eh? and he's fitter than all of us. Yeah, right. You have got a knack there. You do look pretty damn healthy. I must say, it pains me to say, but uh... his his eyesight looks all right as well. John, do you want me, do you want me to give you my secret? Go on then. It's going to an Amsterdam convention. It's locked tight. <laughs> it's locked tight 55, isn't it? <laughs> I actually use locked tight 55 in my job. So I know all about it. I did actually see that, um, Gary, in a forum that going to the Amsterdam convention does actually improve health and skin condition. Yeah. Yep. And, and blindness as well, I hear. <laughs> I that too. A direct consequence of going to these conventions. So if you do have leprosy, you can be cured. <laughs> Go to Amsterdam. Come on, savage. It's just for Gary now. Just look, look how much it means to him. Yeah, it means everything to me, John. I'm only I've only put on. Well, Dee Dee came up with the idea, and I've supported it. Um, we've done it for you. <laughs> Oh, well, look, we've gone over the hour by six minutes. No pressure. <laughs> None felt, mate. None felt. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, could I um, just mention um, a couple of side notes? Yeah. Certainly. I, I um, decided, because um, the, uh, the ITV um, interview went over 4 million um, YouTube views, and obviously we had 2 million watch it live. I decided to write to ITV because I looked through their um, history of all of their um, videos that number many um, over the last eight months. And I just said to them, well, you do realize that this is actually the biggest, you know, the most watched thing you've had in eight months. They then wrote back to me and said, oh, yeah, good point. Could you could you consider coming back on? And I said, what do you think? He, they said, well, why don't you all come on again and do exactly what you said? And I said, not really. I think we want to be moving on. So I said, I am going to ask you to contact Brian Cox and invite him onto the show. And I'm going to ask my friend Nathan to rip him a new arsehole. Um, and for some reason, they turned us down. So, um, so that was disappointing. But at the same time, I also thought it was fun that – I know that Brian Cox has been asked to do a debate through ITV and he chickened out. But moving on from that, I then noticed uh, a video that's been put out by Dr. John D when he went down to um, Weymouth, sorry, Worthing, and he actually did the experiment, oh, sorry, the observation, sorry, Nathan, the observation <laughs> Um, where he actually uh, had a pipe on the on the um, the water's edge, and it had spirit levels. And um, in watching that, I asked Roxanne if I could have his mobile number because even I went there last uh, weekend for the um, for the the test, but it didn't quite work out, or I haven't seen the results yet. Um, I didn't get to meet him, so I spoke to him last night, and we were brainstorming. And I said to him, "Would you consider?" Um, discreetly if we can come on to ITV if we can set it up and off the back of it he was also telling me that on the 22nd and 23rd of this month he's going to go back down to Brighton and um, Worthing and I said wouldn't it be good if we could possibly get ITV there so I'm going to be asking that question on Monday I don't really think that's their type of thing but I just think and John got really excited about the whole idea that if we did get somebody there doing some um, filming from uh, a nationwide uh, network, it would be quite significant. Cool, very cool. I think if you can suck them in, mate, that that'd be awesome to get some of John's. My God, it, it doesn't need 
all his back catalogue is sufficient um, evidence, I think. And laser light has been questioned for a while. I know <laughs> Anthony's going through the sugar experiment now. I'm not sure what that thing proves. But I think with, with John D, I think it'd be a very powerful thing in terms of optics to have his... <clears throat> If I can just mention that, uh, I, I spoke to John yesterday and I said to him, the issue with what we do is that if you showed somebody um, something that is like, for instance, if you if you go from Worthing to um, to Brighton, we all know that, that I think it's meant to be something like 81 foot of curve. And we obviously know that there is no curve because we've been there and I've seen, I've been there myself. I, I went there with Fookers a few years ago. And... What? But if you talk to a local, all they say is, so what? It's not because they're saying, so what, as in they disagree. They're just saying, so what? I've always seen it. I've, you know, unless it's foggy, I've always seen it. So they need to see the difference between what it should be compared to the globe rhetoric compared to what they're actually seeing. So I said to John that really we can't just do, an, do a, a test, you know, do an observation, and this is the result. You need to show them what it should be based on their results. So basically, off the back of that, he got quite excited about the idea that he's got four lasers and he's going to now have laser lights at four heights. So he's going to have one, I think, at one meter, one at, I think it may be four, one at seven and one at 10 or whatever. I can't remember what the actual denom denominations are. But instead of actually just having a laser light, it's actually going to be set at different levels all at the same time. And... Um, that is something that's going to happen in a couple of weeks' time. I can't wait. <laughs> that's going to be amazing to see. Any chance? Do you see, do you chance? Point, it's no point just, just showing somebody. Something. It's like showing somebody an apple and saying, this is fruit. You then show them an orange and they say, well, hold a minute, but I've seen the fruit and it looks like an apple. So yeah, but there's other fruits that are fruits. And they're just accepting what they're given. Like, I mean, you know, they, they can see some bees from the Iron Man or vice versa. They just say, oh, yeah, but I've always seen it for my entire life. But they need to see that they shouldn't be able to see that. So you need to show them the comparison. That, that's the kind of the, the point I was saying in terms of if you're going to have TV stuff and, and why John's presence there is. Because I think their standard defence is going to have a scientist there that will show NASA pictures. But actually, if you've got another scientists there discuss, discussing the validity of the optics and the models, it becomes very hard for them to um, wash away the bullshit by just using yeah but we've got a scientist on the other side saying yeah but I've got pictures from NASA and the European and Imawari so it can't be true you know what I mean and in terms of TV land that's quite powerful on the other side you've got a scientist saying this but if actually on the, our side we've got an optics specialist saying this is what the impact of what we're seeing is and it's not explainable on their model, yeah, it's only explainable when observed across a flat plane, it's very difficult for them to rebut that with... Well, what do you rebut that with? You Another... <clears throat> the only honest thing in any debate is to have another scientist present opposite theories in terms of and validate it the way that john's done um gary can i ask can i ask have you informed itv ab about dr john d no i i spoke to john yesterday and it wasn't with the aim of actually getting Dr. John up there, it was actually to begin with is could I um, basically um, with his permission, get a cut up um, a video or, uh, you know, anything salient that he thinks that it would be okay to, re um, to mention because my goal is to have the likes of Nathan and um, depending on how it works out, but maybe uh, allegedly Dave would be great if we could have him there as well. But we only get eight minutes. That's all they give us. So when we were there last time, we managed to do just over 10 minutes, which was obviously pretty significant, even though it wasn't enough. Um, but I have asked John about the video and with, with brainstorming, it all developed into, um, you know, I asked him, would he even consider coming up if they can like disguise his voice and, you know, blank him out or whatever which i know they can do 
And he said he was more than happy with that. So what are you thinking, John? Well, I'm just, I mean, I, obviously I think it's a terrible idea getting ITV involved and or any mainstream and that, that will be my opinion till my dying day. But if you're going to, then I'd suggest you don't tell them who John D is or his qualifications or anything and actually crack it on their program. Um, you know, just tell them that you've got a guy who's doing these experiments and he's been doing them and they'll think great, you know, another beanie hatted nut job. And, um, on the show, you could actually, you know, reveal that he's actually a PhD in spectroscopy and it is not something to be laughed about by the likes of ITV. Um, I hear what you're saying, but I think there's two things on that. One is um, unless we actually gave it weight uh, that, you know, this person's got a PhD, um, they're not going to be overly interested because they just think it's this load of flat earth is just doing an, an observation. And secondly, um, the um, I don't really think that um, this morning are people that go out there to film things in readiness for a show. So what I'm hoping is it could be that they can actually put me in touch to somebody else within the ITV network, but it definitely won't be them. I don't think so anyway. But yeah, I hear what you're saying, and I don't know, but this is one of the reasons why I wanted to mention it tonight, because um, sometimes you can have too many cooks, but at the same time, there's a lot of brains are here, and obviously in chat, that it would be good to, to make the most of um, the opportunity if I can negotiate it. Well, I mean, I, I, I would just say that, ITV would probably run a mile if you told them he was a PhD and what he did his PhD in and the sort of um, observations he's been gathering over the over the last months. What they want is low hanging fruit and uh, and fish in a barrel to shoot. And um, you know you, you just introduce him as you mate John D. Uh, <laughs> but I'm being slightly slightly sort of facetious anyway. But um, just to it would lovely be lovely to backhand them without them knowing it, but um, I suppose this is live now. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I just feel, I don't know what other people feel uh, here in the in the chat, but I just feel though that you need to give them something. Um, like for instance, as a prime example, I actually spoke to um, or mentioned it uh, within FE Core about you know possibly getting like Nathan on on there with. Um, Brian Cox and I said I think the view count would just be off the scale and Karen B said and I thought it was so funny is it would break the internet <laughs> or crash the internet I think I can't remember the exact words so it's it's like you need something of meat for them to be instead but I I don't think they would touch it anyway regardless if we told them or we didn't tell them I don't think they would want to um, film it well, Gary, it's been talked about already in chat numerous times, and Vagabond just dropped the link. Apparently, Professor Cox is out on his UK tour yeah, right now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, get out there, people. Drum it up. Make some noise. Get this, just, get this I, where it's in I his think, face. I think Nathan's aware of this, but not many other people, and, and, and um, Tony Riley. But um, when we did the thing on, uh, I think it was May the 2nd last year, it was basically the next day. And I think ITV were very keen because it was literally a few days after the UK convention. And Brian was asked, and I think what he did is he did a video link that was within the video, uh, the interview, but he wasn't actually there. So this time when he said, oh, I've asked before, I said, yeah, but this time we've got time on our hands. We can work around him. So he can't use the excuse, oh, I'm sorry, but I'm busy tomorrow. And I, I think it's funny that you know that Brian Cox has been asked and Brian Cox has turned it down. So even though I'd love to have this debate, and let's face it, even though Brian Cox has got a reputation, he's gone up against Nathan. <laughs> he, he would be on a suicide mission. So, uh, and I think he knows it. Oh, I'm sure he knows it. Well, before we um, before we get near the end, um, we've done enough sponsoring. For, for Brian Cox there. And I know Nathan wants to give a couple of shout outs before we go. Um, Nathan. Is, is Bob around still? Yeah. Much <laughs> well, you right? Yeah. Find your okay. friend. <laughs> do, do you know, are you familiar with a YouTuber called Flat Earth Perth? 
Uh, I am not. No. Okay. Well, fellow, what's yeah. your they're five thousand. He's going to ask who was going to do that. I'm not. I'm not doing that <laughs> coroner thing where I think he's your neighbour just because he's in Oz. No, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying that's why. I'm afraid. Are you familiar with the YouTuber? I don't think. Yeah, he's no. Or anything. No. Okay. No, I'm not. Flat Earth Perth. I'm going to do a bit of shilling. So if you don't like shilling, sod off. Don't care. He's basically set up a GoFundMe to um, get a drone camera so he's going to buy his own drone but he basically wants to buy this 30 times zoom camera i'm hoping that adam's got um i sent him the link so see how slick he's going to be if you can oh sh- i was just about to say to you you want to have a go at sh- uh screen sharing on zoom nathan you're no. more than welcome to try on, <laughs> really. on iron realm <laughs> nah, nah. if you can bring it up on, on this gofundme page I'll, so I'll I'll get it it. In the chat though so the chat will get um a link to the gofundme um, if nothing else, look, if, if you don't want to support him financially on, on the campaign, just go to the GoFundMe site and just share it. Stick it on Twitter, stick it on Facebook and share it. And that helps. So I remember, I think it was Anthony Riley's or Ranty's GoFundMe campaign. Karen B shared it on Facebook and that generated a donation. So, you know, sharing it is obviously not quite as good, but you know, as good as you can do if you don't want to actually contribute. Obviously, if you can chuck him a fiver, that'd be brilliant. Um, but yeah, it's $750 of his $1,000 total to get this 30 times Zoom camera. The interesting bit being that he's going to do his observations, which he's got all planned out with this camera. Then if you want to click the play button, because it does actually show you some of the footage that it can produce. Um, but once he's done with it, he said, look, if somebody else contacts me within the community and says, I would like to do X with this camera, he'll box it up and even pay the shipping and get it out to somebody else, potentially somewhere else in the world. Um, so yeah, he's going to do some observations with this camera, um, considering that typically a 30 times optical zoom camera for a drone would be into the thousands, if not tens of thousands of, of dollars, whereas this one's about, like I say, about $1,700. So pretty good value. Um, but I think it's something that would be um, beneficial to the community in terms of the footage that it produce. Now, I well, love- what can what will he be able to do that we haven't seen already? Because, yeah, a 30 times zoom isn't as good as our... Um- uh, P900s and that sort of stuff. So what can he do, do you think, that um, hasn't been done? I don't know. That's a very good question. I mean, ultimately speaking, he's just going to go out and do what he's planned to do with it, and I'm not him. But what I have seen from that particular videographer is lots of things that have sparked my imagination and, and given me explanations for things that I didn't understand before. So in terms of what he does with it, I don't know. But I do know he'll produce some good stuff with it. And that's why I've been in that layering, that height, it's got to show us something different. I mean, like some of the footage that's allegedly, you know, Las Vegas from three or 400 miles away and all that from the airplane, that kind of idea. Yeah, but Walt, I mean, if I go up on, you know, I've got a, I've got a hill here that's about 400 meters off the ground. It's, you know, how high can the drone go? You know, I can go up 400 meters. I can, I can stop along the way and get little, little um, images from up, you know, along the road. Of two hundred. What? Yeah. What? What can he? Yeah. What can he produce that that he can that I can't with my camera? That perfect yeah. view. That perfect think, spot. That perfect. No, 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 I think it's, it's more about it's more about the the change of angle. So quite a lot of what he focuses on is how perspective and the the angle of elevation and how it affects what you're viewing works. Well, if you're just in a fixed location at a given height, yes, you can drop in elevation, you can take a new shot, but a drone gives you something unique in terms of how it operates. So at the moment, you've got people like Tim Osman and Red Rhetoric and people of that nature who are going out with drones and, and making their arguments based on what they can produce from the, very pick from the footage they get. Whereas I would rather a flat earther like Flat Earth Perth, who's a really good videographer, knows how to explain things Um, and has put in quite a lot of research similar in terms of what he's doing and what he's explaining to someone like Phuket word, but, um, but just also, you know, he's an Australian. Um, I think the difference is Rob is that he'll go out and do it. Yeah. He'll use it. That's basically why I'm promoting it. I know he'll use it and he'll produce good stuff. And if, if at the moment I'm like, wow, Tim Osman's got some beautiful videography from his drone. So I don't want to be, 
sniffing Tim and going, can I use your footage? Because it's beautiful. I'd much rather he was doing it. And it's like, he's a friendly and he's on our side. So he'll, he'll make good arguments in terms of how your vision changes as you raise or lower in altitude. And that's something that a, a drone is absolutely custom made for. But the crappy lenses that they put on the typical drones, no, they're not that much use with a really shit hot 30 times zoom. I think it would be. So there we go. I think it's worth shilling for. That's why I'm shilling for it. Yep. Shill away. Sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. I'm excited because I love drones. I've, I've seen some things just with the crappy ones that come with the ones we can get, but some of the higher end ones are well, even it's like, not great. <laughs> like Rob was saying, he's got, you know, a 400 meter hill and um, he's got a decent camera and I've got the south coast not far away. I've got a crappy camera, but it's, I'm not going to do it. Um, and Rob is probably not going to do it, but this guy is putting his uh, reputation out there. And it, it's like ranty, you know, it, it, when it gets funded, you feel obliged to to um, produce. So if that's something this guy can do, then um, I say, yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Hey, Nathan, could you, if people aren't necessarily like, like Rob, even though he's only down the road from him, um, if 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 they're not familiar with but uh, first work, he's it's not some bloke that's just like not been doing stuff. The stuff he's done is he's out there. He's a bit like an Aussie ranty, isn't he? Really? Exactly. Yeah, he's like an Aussie ranty. He's really out there, dedicated doing these observations, but also getting stuck in debunking the globe head assertions. So he even did one on my behalf with, well, not because I asked him to, he just did it. So he saw, I don't watch Sly Sparkane. I'm not interested in most of them, if I'm honest. I don't watch any of their stuff. Um, but he produced a video. So I was like, oh, right. Okay, let's have a look. And it turned out he was debunking an assertion that was made by Sly Sparkane about me. And I was like, oh, okay. He's just spotted some assertion that he doesn't like the look of and has then debunked it. And it, he did it in about a 20 second video. I was like, beautiful you know you did it far quicker and easier than i was trying to explain whilst in debate with the globe head and getting the globe head to draw it out in a cad program while he's either deliberately or through ignorance not understanding what's trying to be communicated he did it and i was like ah why didn't i just describe it like that so it's it's one of those when i when i see his videos not just the one about me but most of them if not all of them i go right that means i can now verbalize that much better for having it visually represented to me with nine times out of ten a verbal explanation from him as well and he's so concise that's what i love about flat earth perth his explanations are short not because i've not got a, a long enough attention span i mean at the moment i'm putting out videos from life is short and again on rant, off the back of ranty's channel with red pill philosophy me and um life is short talking about the horizon and it, it's a six hour explanation for the horizon so it's not like I've not got the patience, but when it comes to Flat Earth Perth, he'll give you an explanation that he can summarise in about 20 seconds, which would, something that would take me two, three, four minutes to to argue the toss about with a globe head in discussion. He can, like I say, he can just summarise it. And most of the time he's doing it with the actual real life, real world footage to back what he's explaining in the face of some globe head asshole's assertion. It, it just highlights I, though, Nathan, doesn't it, that... Um, everyone in flat earth has something to offer and that you know we are a diverse group of people that can all all bring something to the table no matter whether we you know a lot of people put themselves down and um think they can't offer anything at all and it, it just goes to show that uh you know each of us have have our um our what are they called positives <laughs> pros you're right you're right john because i'm shocked because i thought all australians were too busy hanging on to actually do anything but i don't know and they all live near each other obviously it's only about the size of london isn't but, it Australia? But, <laughs> what would it be with that drone you could probably see rob's house if he went up high enough I just put the link to the GoFundMe in the description under the linky link area of our show there too, everybody, if you missed it in chat. 
with Bob and it's had some contributions in it there a bit. <laughs> Bob from Globusters in the chat, he contributed to the GoFundMe campaign, and Midi HC has just dropped twenty twenty dollars on the GoFundMe. Thank you very much. Big shout out. I won't shill for it anymore. Hopefully that'll be the end. Don't want to fill your show with shilling for flat flat earth. <laughs> I don't just, just just subscribe to Flat Earth. Earth. He's great. Yep. He's I just good. subscribed to him just then. I, I don't see it. A little bit of these stuff just then, yeah. Yeah, That's I saw it and checked the video too. <laughs> Sorry. I don't see it as shilling at all. I think it's it's this putting what... putting an idea out there, someone else's something that you think is is worthwhile. And if people want to give to it, they give to it. If they don't even want to click on it then they well, don't even have to click truly, on truly 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 the reason i even started doing this whole crazy crap with all the madness we endure doing these crazy shows and and all it brings is to bring all of us together as family family whatever you want to call it i mean if that doesn't happen then what the hell are we doing this far if we can't that's, all support each other and help each other i think it's brilliant Nathan. go exactly, that's exactly why i like it it's not necessarily about the the funding because even um, Flat Earth Beth himself said, look, I could, you know, I do have the funds to just go out and buy this, but I'd produce my images, few people would watch them, might get a few likes. However, if I do a GoFundMe, it involves the community. So we've been talking about Dr. John D. He dropped $100 on this GoFundMe campaign. Um, so there you go. There's a good shout out for Dr. John Junior's generosity, biggest contributor to the campaign, I believe. Um, but my point is that now... Bob Nodal of Globusters, he's well aware of it and he's going to be shouting it out. He might have reached his total by then, hopefully so. But it means that the, the actual images that he produces will actually reach a wider audience. The mm. explanations he gives, which are so good, so concise, will reach a bigger audience. The people yeah. who are supporting him in his GoFundMe campaign will be interested in the progression of what he does with this camera. So it all works to the benefit of getting the information out there to a wider audience and involving us, I literally us on the panel now, to be involved with it. I wouldn't be talking about it if you'd just done a good video with a drone. And I think um, on, on in the same vein, I'd like to put a shout out about um, Jason Lindgren's film, um, Shoot the Moon uh, with Crow Triple Seven, um, because I, I know for a fact that 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 film will be absolutely impeccable. Um, you know, if it, if it gets the the funding it needs, I don't know where it is. It's been a couple of weeks since I've looked at it now, but I think it was after nineteen thousand dollars or something, which is a pittance for something that uh, the quality and um, and subject matter that they're going to cover in that film. But yeah, so um, on a shilling front, there you go. That's my two shillings worth. Everyone's got a shill for something. There we go. This is the shield time. Everybody hit it, hit it hard. I think shield's the wrong word. It shield, is a shield dis- the correct word. Dif- it's just been... I, shield and- implies a deception is going on because you have the shield in the audience and they're the first to buy the the lotion of, of hand cream or whatever. Snake oil. Snake oil, <laughs> exactly. I think shillings are. Right. I think it's promotion. Right I think it's Pick promotion. Right <laughs> it's it's informing people out there yeah, of right. what's going on. Promotion. That's Let's not put ourselves down. You know, we're not shilling. We're we're we're, we're, we're promoting things that I'm we. I'm still uh, selling handmade hemp hats. If anybody wants there one, you go. Not you so much shill. anymore, you but uh, shill. handmade really hemp hats. I can make one for you. Had it <laughs> my, I had it on earlier doing my video. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, we are now. We've got we've got one one, one last bit then before we we do finish. And but again, it was something I was going to mention, and I don't know. We we didn't know Nathan was coming on tonight. Gary is super secret squirrel. Um, so even yesterday, I didn't know when Nathan was. Um, making me do a plug but it was him um you there guys yeah we can hear you oh sorry the screen had frozen and with all the problems i'm having um (laughs) kind of like so uh, this this week with nathan (laughs) with 
I'm back. I'm back, baby. I'm back. With it. It's like loop flip. Yeah. It, it, you know, let's go out properly. More enough. Getting busy uh, down here. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you now, Nathan, it's that slick. After I've said this, I've still got to line up gravity. So let me finish and then I'm going to get on gravity. Screw um, gravity. What about the presentation? I'm going to be fucking dribbling by the time we get onto that. Well, that, well, that's, that's going to be the second part of the show, though. So it's a fresh, fresh slate. So I might uh, loosen you up. Right. Let me let me get this out before I do forget four it. Four minutes then. Right. So one last thing while Nathan's here, and that was talked about shilling for money, but there's, there's money available out there. And that's the Zinder five thousand dollar Swiss franc stroke Swiss franc equivalent challenge. Yeah, so um, it's he's got five thousand Swiss francs and it's one dollar to one Swiss franc. So five thousand dollars American. He's put on the table for a uh, for an angle of attack challenge. So he's got three different stipulations in terms of how to make things disappear from bottom up and bring things back, changing aperture sizes and various other different things. I, I'm not going to give too many details because I don't want to butcher his challenge and it is his. Now I have put the video, it was actually filmed yesterday, but it's it gone out today as a premiere. Um, so other than the few hundred people that watched it live when it first went out, it's been out to the public today in the most part. So most people will only have heard about this today and it's been titled with that exact title, i.e. $5,000 flat earth angle of attack challenge, but he's offered five grand to meet his criteria. So there's a few people out there that sparked enough interest in the angle of attack just from me talking about it. Now there's five grand on the table. So for all those people who are out there, there's been quite a few trying to debunk me, specifically me, about this very concept. I've used Angle of Attack deliberately just because it's a catchy title. I don't need hundreds of people telling me about aviation examples. That's not the point. It's just an all-encompassing way of describing what happens when you raise and lower your elevation, depending on your aperture size, to get things to disappear from bottom up. But I've called that angle of attack because it's much more catchy than what I've just described. And he's put out a challenge. This is Zinder on the Flat Earth debate for five grand. So that should hopefully spark people's interest and at least get my video a few views, if nothing else. But he does literally go on camera. This guy's never been on camera, to my knowledge, to, to date. But in order to show that he was genuine, he went on camera for the first time, fanned out his five grand, and then laid out his, his, his terms. So check it out. Well worth a look. Zach, you're good. you've already got stage two, haven't you? Or we're waiting for why you haven't. Yeah, the equation. Oh, well, actually, is that stage three or you've got I think the... think that's stage three, yeah. I think you've got the optical. I, I did ask him that on Nathan's show, why your stuff wasn't quite sufficient. So I look forward to seeing his proper terms and conditions. It's a an intriguing proposition um but it seems very vague uh, and undefined at the moment and i think it needs some some clarity so it's worth putting the effort in possible just to uh, put that out there yeah um just, give just a little... to think. you're about to round the show out aren't you yeah yeah do you, do, you, do you tell the people who are in the chat that they should be subscribed? Because when you're live, you pick up quite a few people who just might pop by. So if you're in the live chat now and you're not subscribed to Iron Realm Media, what the hell is wrong with you? Oh, we don't do that. We're oh, trying to stay under the radar. I'm, I'm busy. Yeah, got, I've got Flat Earth debate on the screen. I'm, I'm, I'm shilling for you, Nathan. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Adam, because I'm that kind of guy. I'll, <laughs> I'll buy you a bit of time to... You know, queue up gravity, get it all together. And you don't have to reply to me. This is me buying your time. Hint, hint. <laughs> I try it every week, Nathan. Don't worry. I try it every week. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. What does he reply? No, no. It, it, it doesn't matter how much you build it up. The 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 hints never taken. It's never queued up. It's never <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. Just just play with it. No, we, we actually actively project manage to deter people from. Um, subbing, liking, and all the rest of it, because um, it, it keeps our head off the block. Nah, don't listen to John Savage. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You should all be subscribed to Unreal Media. This is next thumb set. it down. <laughs> thumb it down. <laughs> you should all be subbed. If you're not, subscribe today. 
do you ever get daunted by the amount of subscribers you do have and and thinking about the amount of people you are talking to on a sort of daily basis does that does that ever daunt you no i'm looking at them going why isn't it more <laughs> i knew you'd say that too <laughs> <laughs> nah, it scares the crap out of me if there's more than three people listening. I, I think if you're a globehead right now, if this will, hopefully the or enough time, we'll see. Um, there's there's bigger YouTubers out there like Jaron and Red Pill Philosophy. You've got like 140 and 210 thousand subscribers respectively and they're looking for the severed heads from the show to stick on spikes mm. out to their audience. So. If you're a globe head, just be aware if you come on the debate that you might end up with your impaled head on some bigger YouTuber's spike. Just so you know. <laughs> Are you not worried about accidentally going off in a rant and having the Daily Mail pick up on it and suddenly you're in jail? But you'd love it, wouldn't yeah, you? Your, your hit rate would go through the... You'd absolutely love it. Arrest live from jail. Flat earth <laughs> debate. <laughs> Sounds of chains. That's the new show. We're doing it next week, buddy. <laughs> uh, you're a true revolutionary. You really are. Good man. Good man. Right, will you lot stop rambling? Because I've been ready for hours. You see, oh, he replied. See. Yeah, it's a reply. You could have just played it. And we just shut up immediately. We're well, professionals, I'll, mate. I'll, I, look, I don't know whether you're going to hear it. That's the question. <laughs> or whether the whether it'll broadcast. So, Let's just hope the audience hears it. <laughs> yeah, we might be professionals, but we're not clairvoyant. So what we're going to do now is what we're going to do. Have a quick break. Come back. And then we've got Mr. Savage. And truly, 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 if you're not subscribed to Nathan Oakley's channels multipulously go over there get over there and sub and sure hit that like button share it don't go anywhere if you're in chat we're just taking no. a slight break go get you some coffee go get you go anywhere I'm whatever sorry, Walt. I, don't know. I reckon you i reckon you're gonna need plenty of coffee because when john starts talking uh, well that was my i was trying to get there thank you rob you could take it better than me on that one so yeah get your coffee this is really going to be a great presentation plenty yeah, of this made me have an Lots aha moment everybody i, thought I know I thought I understood all this stuff. That was so brilliant. We'll talk about that. Pointed all this out, and it was like, oh, holy, yeah. I haven't had a wow moment in a long time. So it was, yeah. it was so, uh, it so, it was so, so good. good. Of course, that's the one so time John's good. not recording it. <laughs> that's why your eyesight's so good, Rob. <laughs> Let's go grab some coffee, and we'll find out. Yep. A all right, love you all. Stay right here. We'll be right back. It is Thanks, now. guys. Thank you, Garen. Are you staying? Pretty high it's stick around, Garen. Almost in the clouds and there. Thanks, to the ground with their chains. Back that slam. Misery. They've got a hold of me. Yeah, that's really hot.